This episode of Military Matters is brought to you by Stars and Stripes. Stars and Stripes provides independent news and information to the U.S. military community, including active duty service members, DOD civilians, veterans, contractors, and their families. Unique among Department of Defense authorized news outlets, Stars and Stripes is governed by the principles of the First Amendment. No slants, no agendas, just the news. Use promo code podcast and save 50% on your digital subscription. Go to stripes.com and see the difference for yourself. That's stripes.com. When your orders come in and it's time to make a plan to move or store your personally owned vehicle, International Auto Logistics is here as the number one resource for U.S. service members POV needs. Just use their website to get started at www.pcsmypov.com to get all of the information you'll need on storing and picking up your vehicle or Check out the just launched IAL mobile app. Just search for PCS My POV in the Apple Store or on Google Play. I'm Rod Rodriguez. I'm Desmond Ferris. This is Military Matters. The early 2000s gave us a lot of today's conveniences and technology that can feel like it's always been there. It's kind of hard to imagine a world where you can't instant message someone or read a political rant and either like it or ignore it. Facebook and Instagram gave rise not only to shared memes, public selfies, and pictures of someone's meal, it also opened up a whole new world for influencers. Endorsements, celebrity status, and influence are as much a part of human existence as culture and religion. Whatever a society values, there will be someone sought to promote it. Prior to the advent of social media, influence was a power held by the few who made it onto the radio, and then the silver screen, and then the smaller screen, television. Actors and singers could be found throughout the early decades of TV telling you about their favorite cereal, car, and cigarettes. Sammy Davis Jr. even did a commercial where all he did was make up a beat with his mouth for 55 seconds, and the only word he says is at the end. He said the name of the Japanese whiskey he was promoting, and that was the commercial. Then social media happened, and everything changed. Now, every day, normal people outside of the Hollywood sphere had the potential to gain the attention of millions of followers and fans of their social media page. A recent Nielsen survey found that 92% of consumers trust online word of mouth recommendations. 70% of teens surveyed trust influencers more than traditional celebrities. And I'll throw one more stat at you. 85% of chief marketing officers believe that influencer marketing is critical to their future success. Veterans and service members are becoming increasingly more visible on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok. They're doing everything from funny skits, political rants, showing off their physiques, to lip syncing and dancing. All of this has presented lots of opportunities for shared hilarity and possible exposure for aspiring veteran artists and those still serving. This has also led to some unique challenges for military leaders who have demonstrated concern about how service members are portraying themselves and the military through their social media platforms. In this episode, we're talking about the rise of the veteran influencer. What's it like to be the face of one of the most well-known veteran-owned businesses? how being Facebook famous might have saved an influencer's life, and why you should think twice before you decide you want to be an influencer. Here at Black Rifle Coffee Company, we offer premium, fresh roasted coffee delivered straight to your door. Hi, I'm Evan Hafer, CEO and founder of Black Rifle Coffee Company, the world's veteran-owned and operated premium roast-to-order coffee company. Stop! 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 What the hell are you guys doing? Don't care. Don't care. Kids out. Owners over here. Dicky, run! Come on, let's go. Guys, we literally own a coffee company. Give me that. Give me that, man. Mm-hmm. Appreciate it. All right. Remind everybody while we're here, my shining boy. Black Rifle Coffee is a veteran-owned and operated coffee company that serves the finest coffee directly to your door. Woo! Rangers lead the way. Come on, JT. Never run out of coffee and get all the coffee you need with our Coffee Club subscription. 
good. You remembered. Still not as good as Matt. Hot Logie, let's go. If you're a Military Matters listener, I'm going to wager that you're either a service member, a veteran, or a supporter of the military. Not a crazy assumption considering this is a podcast. Unlike radio, which you would tune into a station and listen to the lineup chosen for you, as a podcast listener, you choose the lineup of what you listen to. This choice means that you joined a group, a demographic of like-minded folks who are interested in Stars and Stripes podcast content. The power of demographics is where the influencer power resides. Black Rifle Coffee knows its audience and who is most likely to purchase their coffee. So their online presence and promo videos really hit home their military heritage. They know what resonates with the demographic most likely to visit their page and hit the buy button. One of those Black Rifle Coffee voices you heard is none other than Matt Best. Matt is one of the founders and owners of Black Rifle Coffee, but he's also famous for his outrageous skits and videos that have him shooting guns, snapping his fingers and bikini clad girls popping up and having fun with the ranger culture he knew as a service member. Matt Best is one of the most in-demand veteran influencers today. He's arguably the veteran that kicked off the veteran influencer movement. Well, my first joke would be, there can be only one Matt. No, uh, no, I think the, it's humbling and um, very rewarding to hear that people think I'm kind of one of the first guys that paved the way. I mean, realistically speaking, I think the term influencer is such a broad statement. And to specifically orientate that towards military influencers can be challenging, right? Because what does that define? Does it mean that someone served their country and now they're pursuing said um, opportunity or entrepreneurship outside of that? And then their veteran status is something that they carry with them along the way. I never set out to be a quote unquote influencer or a public figure. It just kind of happened. And you know, when I started releasing videos like how to be an operator and army ranger versus Navy seal, I think such people got community engagement through that. And, oh my God, I say the F word like this and all that. And it was a different lens on the military experience that hadn't been seen before. And I think through my journey, there's been good and bad that has come out of that. Right. Because hypothetically, I, I'm sure there's plenty of people actually that disagree with my style of content. And so the last thing you'd want is for people to believe that the military community lives in the narrative that I create, right? I am one segment of that community and it's a hyper diverse community of every color, every race, every sexual preference in the military. And I speak for a small segment of it. And all I really do is speak for it for myself. Um, but with that said, yeah, it's been a really entertaining road to see a lot of community growth through it. And I hope awareness and understanding of what the military experience is. Being a trailblazer is great. You get to be the first one to reach your audience. Your brand has a much better chance at survival and success, but there are challenges unique to being the most visible and most widely regarded veteran influencer. Something that I didn't realize because I was kind of caught up in what I was doing day to day was the lens that I would be under. And I'm actually surprisingly an introvert. I kind of have a gregarious uh, personality that you know likes to make a room laugh but I really like to be alone and be in my own thoughts and create so that for me has been a massive challenge and, and moreover I think that there is um, a stigma associated with being a public figure in the veteran community that people have hyper unrealistic expectations on what you should and shouldn't be doing but I mean I think that's for for everybody right no matter if you're in film um, an artist an author there's an expectation of what people want to mold you into. But as long as you stay true to yourself, and you're a good human. I think it's all worth it. And seeing kind of the things that we've been able to accomplish in the community and with nonprofits and changing people's lives, all of it's worth it. I mean, I can handle the I'm a douchebag. He's an idiot. I hate that guy comments. Those are just face value statements with no substance because they've never met me in person. It is important to note that Matt has done all of his social media work his skits, and establishing his coffee company as a veteran. He didn't have to worry about his chain of command scrutinizing his every move. There are some active duty service members who have been criticized for making skits and talking politics while in uniform in their social media. You know, when I served in 2nd Ranger Battalion, there is no way my platoon, team leader, squad leader, or even when I was a team leader, like, 
would have ever allowed for me to go on a political rant. And I don't know the dynamics and the, you know, the culture right now of active military, but it is interesting to see. And I think that people have to be severely uh, careful with that because not only is it a reflection of their own statements and their own personality, but it does make people from that third and fourth order effect uh, believe that the culture of the military is specifically orientated towards our thought process based off of them having a platform. So there's a lot of responsibility that comes with being so loud. Matt Best became a household name in the veteran space through his videos, but he's also an actor and recently became a best-selling author. So does he consider himself an influencer, an actor, a writer, I'm a squirrel, you know, I go where I want. <laughs> um, I'd say first and foremost, you know, I'm a, I'm a business owner. That's something I truly love to do. And it's why I've had so many startups, you know, but I think it's all intertwined in itself where Black Rifle wouldn't be where it is without, you know, my professional approach to business. And it wouldn't be there without my creative approach to, um, you know, social media and content. And I'm just one slither of a lot of hardworking people that have made this happen. So I'm not taking credit. I'm just saying in my own avenue. Yeah, I, I'm I'm kind of everywhere with that. But but number one is a business owner and ensuring that the people that we employ have great jobs, great benefits, and great culture to come in every single day at work. And then part of that, obviously, I love to like act. I love to play music and make silly jokes. I love to do all that stuff. So it's kind of finding all those core competencies that I was born with as an individual and intertwining them into one mission that's going forward. Being an influencer means you have the attention of your audience. That attention can be something of a mixed bag. The scrutiny can be intense. This is multiplied when you're an active duty service member with a huge following. There are few uniformed service members as familiar with the pros and cons of being what some have coined Facebook famous as Sergeant First Class Aston Muse. I am Sergeant First Class Aston Patrice Muse. My job is information systems tech and now I'm doing the social media for USAREC. So I am in the G79 marketing section up here at USAREC at Fort Knox. USAREC is the US Army Recruiting Command. She's helping the Army do what she did with her Facebook page, where she started posting funny skits based on her experience as a former drill sergeant and NCO. I am Facebook famous, yes. I do uh, little videos um, about different situations that people can relate to, like. Anybody can relate to someone being late for staff duty or CQ, or anybody can relate to having to take off all of the protective gear when you're doing PT out in the, the cold weather, or, you know, people just all around just doing silly things in the military, you know. Don't shoot me, soldier. Don't shoot me. All right, you got Fast Freddy coming up on your left. How you missed that? I told you it was coming. I know it's only 10.30, but can we do the child run now? Because I'm going to kill him. I'm going to kill him. Congratulations, you shot a 27. What about the rest of them that got away, broke into your house, and murdered your whole family? Get off the range. You see that? It's 16 lanes out here, and it's three drill circles. It's 50 feet between these lanes. I ain't got time to be coming all the way from lane one to lane four because you don't remember how to do sports. Am I the only one who thinks there's nothing safe about being a safety? Sergeant Muse wasn't without her criticism as she built her following. Some of her military leaders were concerned about her skits and how they could be interpreted. There were some times in the beginning it was very rough. Like, I got called names. People were threatening me, like, oh, you're making the Army look bad. And it's like, I'm not making the Army look bad. I'm making people that are late to staff duty look bad. I'm making people that, are, that can't call cadence look bad. And I started getting a lot of messages in the inbox. Because for a while, I was like, you know what? I don't, I don't need, like, they write. You know what? I'm, I'm, I'm not going to do this anymore. Slowly but surely, soldiers started reaching out to me, like, hey, you know, I don't know you, Sergeant, but I have a question. Uh, this is the situation that I'm in. And I found that I was able to well, find a way to put their story out there. So I would I would do the post, I would put this story up on my page and NCOs would reach out, like the good NCOs would reach out like, hey, give me that soldier's information. I'm here, I can help them because this is ridiculous. Or, you know, someone might have a question about, well, you know, I'm going to the board next month and my my supervisor is not giving me any type of, of leadership as to what to do. So I found that I was being an NCO 
to a few hundred soldiers like that I would go through and it's like every message was, hey, I need help with this. Hey, do you have advice on this? I want to go drill. What do I do to, to set myself apart? And that is what kept me going. If that wouldn't have happened, then I probably would have stopped maybe two years ago, you know, or, or closer to the beginning. But the simple fact that people are actually looking to me for advice and I'm able to give it to them, like share the information, which is something that an NCO is supposed to do, You're supposed to mentor, coach and train. Why? Why stop? Because someone's like, oh, well, I didn't like that video. Does this mean that Sergeant Muse with her thousands of followers can say whatever she wants, do whatever she wants because of her celebrity status while still in the army? There, there are times, there are things that I, I would love to talk about, like things that I would like to bring out in the open, but it's like, oh, no, 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 let's not, let's just, we'll, we'll sit on that one. We'll probably come back to that one or, you know, I'll, I'll talk to someone else about it. It's like, hey, maybe you can do something on this per se. You know, it's just, there are just certain things I can't touch because I do realize that, yes, although I do have this prominent social media following and everyone might like me, not everyone agrees with what I do and what I say. So it's, it's all about remaining professional. Like I wouldn't want to do anything to where it's like, oh, well, you can't tell me anything. You over there acting like this in your videos and you're going to come to me and tell me this and this and that. So I always try to put a little truth in the videos, but not to, not so much as to take away from the professionalism and, you know, my credibility. Because at the end of the day, I'm still an active duty soldier. Sergeant Muse was helping soldiers and NCOs around the Army answer questions they had about everything from career advice to solving personal issues. She even related to me the story of helping someone get help after they expressed they were potentially suicidal. What Sergeant Muse didn't anticipate was that her Facebook famous status would actually save her life. After finding a lump in one of her breasts, Sergeant Muse was desperate to get the appropriate medical attention. So I wasn't getting the help that I needed. Once I found the lump, called TRICARE, I kept getting told, hey, go to the emergency room, go see what they can do for you there. And it's like, no, I just found, I found this, this practice right here. They said they can look at me right now and they take TRICARE and I didn't have the, the right, the correct TRICARE. Like they have the different types of, of TRICARE. So I, I put it out there. I was like, look, now I'm <laughs> I'm running around here talking about how great the army is and everything's good. And I can't get someone to touch me for the life of me so I can find out what is happening. They were saying, you know, do, do the, the MTS, the military treatment facility. I had already gone and I'd already talked to someone. They were like, oh, we're going to put you, we're going to put in a referral. The referral never went through because he wasn't my primary care provider. It was just a lot. So when I put that out, that was more or less like a, hey, all right, this is what's going on with me. And I hate to say it, but I feel like if I wasn't who I was, I probably wouldn't have gotten the help that I needed. Because as I put that up, I started reading those messages from like other soldiers who had found lumps like months ago. And they're like, I still can't find anyone to help me, you know? So I made it a point to start sharing the story. Okay, well, this is y'all, y'all were able to help me out. Um, <clears throat> Sergeant Major Gavia was like amazing. She she like swooped in and was like, why didn't you tell me this? You know, I got you. And, and within that week, I had gotten checked out. I knew what it was. We had found there was a lump in the other one that I didn't find and the doctors didn't find until I did an MRI. Why do we have to wait until we're 40? Like, I feel like if, <laughs> if we have like a history of it or if we just want to get it checked, we should be able to get it checked. They have the They have the capabilities to do so. Like, why can't I go in and be like, hey, I want to make an appointment to get a mammogram? You know, I had five mammograms in like one day after this. But you got soldiers out there that can't get it. They can't get one. If Sergeant Muse didn't have the following that she did, would she have received the care that she needed in time? As she said, there are soldiers right now who have been waiting for months to get seen. Matt Best and Sergeant Muse both credit their social media status for their success. And in Sergeant Muse's case, she can probably thank her Facebook fame for her life. After the break, we'll talk to another veteran who's achieved both social media and traditional media fame. We'll also talk about what you need to know before you jump in to the veteran influencer waters. All that after the break. This episode of Military Matters is brought to you by Stars and Stripes. Stars and Stripes provides independent news and information to the U.S. military community 
including active duty service members, DOD civilians, veterans, contractors, and their families. Unique among Department of Defense authorized news outlets, Stars and Stripes is governed by the principles of the First Amendment. No slants, no agendas, just the news. Use promo code podcast and save 50% on your digital subscription. Go to stripes.com and see the difference for yourself. That's stripes.com. When your orders come in and it's time to make a plan to move or store your personally owned vehicle, International Auto Logistics is here as the number one resource for U.S. service members POV needs. Just use their website to get started at www.pcsmypov.com to get all of the information you'll need on storing and picking up your vehicle. Or check out the just launched IAL mobile app. Just search for PCS My POV in the Apple Store or on Google Play. Despite having a podcast, the truth is no one is stopping me or Rod on the streets and saying, hey, don't I know you from Military Matters? As cool as that may sound at first, there's a level of apprehension to that level of exposure that Rod and I are both aware of. Fame has always come with a price. At least that's what they say in the movies. So we wanted to talk with someone in the veteran space who deals with this kind of fame or notoriety that aspiring veteran influencers are looking to achieve. My name is Jennifer Marshall. I served in the U.S. Navy for five years, and now I work as a host and actress in Los Angeles. I would say they probably know me from hosting my own show on the CW called Mysteries Decoded, or they know me as Max's mom in Stranger Things, or they know me as Lieutenant Colonel Bailey in Hawaii Five-0. I wanted to know what did being an influencer mean to someone who's already been working in traditional media? I think the word influencer has gotten kind of a bad rap with, you know, certain reality TV people plugging like hashtag skinny tea or hashtag, you know, whatever product it is that they can make money off of from a plug. I think as far as the veteran community, um, veteran influencer, I think that's a good thing because I think we deserve to have representation. And to many people, the only vet that they know is kind of their grandfather from World War II. So if we can show civilians, you know, this is who we are, we're just a microcosm of society, we exist, I think it's great. Jennifer maintains a balance between her social media life, her traditional media life, and her personal life. We asked her about trying to use social media as a platform for breaking into the world of entertainment especially for active duty influencers. I just think it's ballsy. I really do. Um, This wasn't available when I was in, you know, we didn't have social media when I was in, but I I don't know if I would have gone that route just because then all eyes are on you and you kind of have a chain of command that, you know, wants to nail you to the wall for whatever you do. So I think it's different when it's something that's dramatic. Um, You know, that has a little bit more leeway because it's like, oh, we're trying to show the general public how life is or how, you know, a military funeral is or how it is serving. But I think comedy that gives, you know, the chain of command a much, it just gives them a lot more to be upset about or offended about. So let's be real. When you have a chain of command and you're dealing with 05s and 06s and you're, you know, senior enlisted leader, what we find funny, they're probably not going to find funny. So it's a really a roll of the dice. And that's not to say I don't find it funny or I don't applaud them. I do. I think, you know, I, I think some of the stuff is really, really great. Um, but, you know, you're rolling the dice there. Anytime you wear your official government uniform, it's like you're, you're, you belong to the Department of Defense. So unfortunately, but that's just how it is. Being an influencer means putting yourself in a spotlight, intentionally highlighting yourself. The lucrative part of the whole thing comes in advertisements and endorsements. As we said earlier, chief marketing officers see influencer marketing as a huge part of their strategy to making their product successful. But at what price for the influencer? What if that means sacrificing your morals or ethics? Or simply being someone that you aren't in order to get the number of followers that would make you marketable for sponsorships and endorsements? I asked Jennifer if she ever struggles with being real as an influencer. No, I never feel like that because I am just me and I do lose followers because of it. I mean, there are sometimes I log in and I'll post something that's not so glamorous or whatever. And I'll be like, well, okay. And then, you know, I'll post something that's like a throwback from when I used to model or something like that. And, 
it'll get, you know, double or triple the likes and I'll get followers. So I realized that it's sort of this environment where people, they kind of want to see this curated life and they want to see everything that's perfect. But, you know, even after I posted about one of my, one of my best friends from high school recently passed away and we went to his funeral and it was hard. It was really, really hard. And I think I lost, you know, five or 10 followers from that. So you just don't, you just don't know why people are unfollowing. And honestly, you, you can't, you can't care. You can't care. I know for a fact, if I posted pictures of me in bikinis and a bunch of cleavage shots, sex sells, I'd have a lot more followers than what I do, but that's not who I am. I have four children. I've been married for 17 years. Um, you know, if someone wants to market themselves that way, more power to them. That's not who I am. And I'm not going to do that just to gain followers. The lure of sponsors can be more than just about monetization, especially in the world of podcasting. Having sponsors can lend legitimacy to an influencer. The idea is this company thinks we're awesome enough to pay for an advertising spot. That means we're awesome enough for you to listen or to follow. There's a temptation there to jump on the first sponsorship offer you're given. So is that a good idea? I feel like when people are going on just shilling things, it really hurts you. Any agent, you know, if people are looking to get into entertainment, any agent will say, that's kind of the dumbest thing that you can do because then, you know, most of those, it's kind of an in perpetuity thing. You're attached to this product forever and ever. So if you become super famous, Angelina Jolie famous, they'll say, well, you signed this contract and it gives us rights to who you are. So, you know, any person looking to come to Hollywood, commercials are your lifeline. That's how you make it from t to TV and film bookings. Commercials pay most of the bills. TV and film doesn't pay that much compared to commercials. So if you have a bunch of things where you go to an agent and say, oh, I was, you know, I shilled all these things. The agent is going to say, I'm not interested. Bye. Um, so I would really, really tell people, you know, be business minded and, and, and don't do that stuff. And plus just be authentic. Everyone knows you're not into the skinny tea or the amazing mascara that makes you look like you have cockroaches on your eyelashes. Like just, you know, be picky about what you're associating your brand with. And, you know, I was a spokesperson for a company and I eventually ended up, you know, going the other way from the company because I just felt like I want everything to be on the up and up. And if it's not completely on the up and up, um, I don't want any part of it. Matt Best. Um, I think it's, you know, a, a token of why I've sustained um, and, uh, so long on the internet and not been a flash in the pan was, I never wanted to be reliant on AdSense or um, influencer engagements or promotional deals. You know, early on, I said I'd rather do the work that I truly believe in, what I truly love, and an extension of my personality, not someone, you know, holding up the chicken wire, making me dance like a doll for whatever personal and professional gain they want out of my likeness just to burn me and then move on to the next guy. And I think that's something I hope to communicate with my story with my business partners is we created something we believe, believed in, which is Black Rifle Coffee and a few other businesses. And that's something that I tailor most all of my professional outreach towards. And then within that organization, creating enough opportunity for the people that I want to help, meaning with whether a nonprofit, transitional issues, um, you know, all the, the organizations we work with. So that's kind of been my thing. And I'm sure I've pissed people off along the way as far as you know, hey man, hold up this protein bottle. We're a veteran owned company. I'm like, I'm, I'm just not that guy, you know, where I can help, I will, but I'm not going to dilute my personality because at the end of the day, I have over 200 employees that, you know, my, I directly contribute to their employment as far, in Black Rifle. And so I have to stay true to them because they're my family and they work so hard for us that it's my obligation to work that hard for them. Sergeant Muse? I'm real careful about what I put out. Like, I'm not going to be the one to be like, oh, you got a mixtape? Oh, okay, let me hear you. All right, I'm gonna go and put this on my page. I get a lot of those too. And it's like, I'm not promoting your mixtape. Um, but if someone comes to me and they have an idea and they explain to me what they're doing, and if I'm like, hey, you know what? That's something I would want, then of course I'll share it. So what advice do our veteran influencers have for other aspiring influencers, whether they're in uniform or not? I would just say, stay true to what you believe in in your art form and your and your mission. You know, I think, the world's a weird place and the bigger you get, the more popular you get. People see dollar signs and engagement and they'll try to tailor and conform you to whatever they want for their own self benefit. So just stay true to what you believe in. And really, I think the, the main goal in life is to be happy. And if you love what you do every single day and you're passionate about it, 
then just chase that and success will come with it. I think often people define what society constructs as happiness or success. Just do what you want to do and you'll, I'd rather make less money and do what I love every single day than be a millionaire and freaking hate what I do. Sergeant Muse. So I would say if you're thinking about doing like little skits and stuff, keep it professional. You know, remember that you are active duty. Um, you can get in trouble for it. Like, you know, if you abuse it, so don't just go on there, you know, just cussing and, and fussing and then making a scene, you know, try to keep it as super professional as possible. Like don't, don't go on talking about your chain of command. Just, I don't know, be careful. Definitely be careful. Um, and just, you know, keep in mind what you do and what you say, because you can still be held accountable. You know, UCMJ action still applies. After hearing all that, but you still want to be famous. Maybe you're thinking, I'll skip all that social media, Facebook famous stuff and go straight to the source. Go to Hollywood. No, 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 no. Listen to what you need to do. 99% of actors fail. They fail. So you can't come out here thinking, I'm going to be, especially if you're a white male or a white female. Good luck. We're oversaturated. Not going to happen. Now, if you are ethnically ambiguous and you're covered in tattoos, like that's a very specific look. Come on out here, do your thing, whatever. If you are a very specific look, that actually works in your favor because there's so few, right? But if you are, oh, I'm white bread, you know, Wanda from Missouri. Okay, there's so many and they've been here since 18. Good, good luck with that. Um, you know, I'm six feet tall with red hair. Yes, I'm a white female, but I'm six feet tall with red hair. So directors and producers either say, ooh, we love that. Or they go, ooh, no, um, that's a good thing. You, it's better to have hate or love than to have people go, ah, okay, she'll do. What I would say is everyone has a survival job. Unless you're a commercial you know, guru who books all of these spots, everyone has a commercial job. I have a, or everyone has a survival job. I have a friend who he's a series regular on a show and he has a survival job. So you want to have something that is lucrative, that brings in money. So you're not living paycheck to paycheck. You're not stressed out when you go on auditions. If your agent asks you to get another headshot, you're not freaking out about how you're going to pay for that. I have friends out here who literally have, you know, 30 cents in their checking account. I don't know how people live like that. I could never do that. I also have friends who are vets. They come out here and they're like, oh, I'm going to spend my GI bill at this acting school. I don't recommend doing that. You have to have something to fall back on. And, you know, people say, oh, if you have something to fall back on, you won't chase the dream 100%. Yes, you will. It just depends on the type of person you are. What I would say is, you know, have your backup plan. My degrees are in international politics, Spanish, and administration of justice. All of those things bring depth to my roles when I'm playing, you know, uh, someone from the State Department, a lawyer, a police officer. I pull from all that knowledge, and that's what you want. You don't want to be an actor who comes here, and they say, what do you do? An actor. What's your hobby? Acting. What's your background in? Acting. <sighs> Boring. Nobody cares. They want to know what makes you different. There is a slew of famous actors, singers, comedians, every aspect of the world of entertainment has been touched by a veteran or service member. Social media is just one of the newest platforms for artists to express their creativity. It's no wonder that in a world of Jake Pauls, PewDiePie's, Jenna Marbles, we have our Matt Best, Sergeant Muse, and Jennifer Marshalls. And there are tons more veteran influencers out there like Yusha Thomas, Drew Hernandez, John Burke, and the folks at the ever controversial Vet TV. At the end of the day, a veteran influencer should view themselves as an entrepreneur. And like Matt Best said, be a squirrel and go where you want. Be adventurous and critics be damned. Unless you're still active duty, then be cautious, be professional, and for sure keep your head on a swivel. Don't make content that gives someone ammunition to use against you if they don't like what you're doing. But then again, fortune favors the bold. Sergeant Muse was brave enough to put her medical issue out there and the results might have saved her life. Sergeant Muse continues to share her journey through cancer treatments on her Facebook page, but it's not all doom and gloom. She's also putting up hilarious videos, teaming up with other influencers, and will hopefully show the army how it's done. Not gonna lie, I don't think the army can be intentionally funny. They're more of that, why are we sweeping the motor pool in the rain kind of funny, or the time we redeployed and had to go through a TSA screening with our rifles in hand. Two words, Rod, Air Force. You chose wisely. 
Folks, Des made a great choice and so can you. Choose Stars and Stripes for your digital news. Federally mandated to be fair and unbiased. We're living in a world where newspapers are owned by politically motivated billionaires, not Stars and Stripes. Definitely for sure, no billionaires here. Don't believe me, just check out the budget cuts. Come on, dude, too soon. Use promo code PODCAST and get 50% off your subscription to Stars and Stripes. Go to stripes.com and enter promo code PODCAST. In case you didn't know, Stars and Stripes is on the chopping block for those budget cuts, folks. It's America's news. It's in the name, folks, Stars and Stripes. They were there for me and OIF1. I didn't see the Wall Street Journal being handed out to service members for free, just saying. They were there for us. Now, we're going to be there for them. Support Stars and Stripes today. Rod, is Wall Street Journal going to sue us for saying that? Not worried. It's the coronavirus apocalypse. We'll duke it out in the Mad Max wastelands. I'm Rod Rodriguez. I'm Desmond Ferris. This was Military Matters. Follow us on Twitter at Stripes MM Pod. That's Stripes Mike Mike Pod. I'm also on Twitter at Rod Pod Rod. And you can find Desmond at D Pod Ferris. All of those links will be in the show notes. This episode was written and produced by myself, Rod Rodriguez. Additional production assistance by Desmond Ferris. Executive produced by Benjamin Bateman. This was a Stars and Stripes production. We'll see you at the next episode. When your orders come in and it's time to make a plan to move or store your personally owned vehicle, International Auto Logistics is here as the number one resource for U.S. service members POV needs. Just use their website to get started at www.pcsmypov.com to get all of the information you'll need on storing and picking up your vehicle. Or check out the just launched IAL mobile app. Just search for PCS My POV in the Apple Store or on Google Play.